Hi, Pamela. Got to put my ears in. Hi, Pamela. Pamela? Pamela? Amethia, you were there. Amethia? Can anybody hear me? Are we okay? Yes. You can hear me, good. I'll, I, won't, I won't put in the chat, can you hear me then? How are you all doing? Can, how are you all doing tonight? Good. Good, nice to see it. Somebody else was in here earlier, but they skipped out on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Ethia, what do you plan on doing with this? I don't know. Huh? <laughs> I have no idea. No idea, good. That's good, <laughs> keep an open mind. <laughs> Try to. There we go. Uh, any question? Marie, are you out there? Hi, Marie. Hi. I got, we have a third person in too. All right, guys, you don't have to come on at five o'clock. These are just, uh, generally speaking, it's the easiest way I have to get in contact with you for office hours. I mean, right. you're welcome. I mean, you're welcome to watch me look for Australian shepherd puppies, but. Uh... <laughs> Actually, I have a question. Oh, I have an answer, Marie. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see what, I, is there any way you can send us a link so we can get in with my, my lab and mastering? Because it's yeah. that yeah. easy for me. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, guys. This is going to be easier, easier than you think, all right? Okay. Uh, let me, I'm going to see if I can share a screen here. All right. All right. I'm in the course right now. Can you see, can you see the screen? Yes. Yes. All right. Let's go course home. Okay. Scroll down. You see this right here? Oh, uh, okay. That's how you get onto it, okay? Oh, okay, thank you. So basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a screen like this, all right? Mm -hmm. if, if I hit this button, what's going to happen is uh, uh, it's gonna go directly to my course because I'm already logged in. But what it'll do for you is it will direct you to a place where you can add that code that I gave you, okay? Okay. okay. Make sense? Good question, yes. Marie. Thank you. That's easier. Thank you. Hi, Aaron. How are you doing? Fine as kind. Fine as kind. Uh, any so, any so we're we in my courses. Okay. Um, I'm in this my lab. Is I'm it Ethan. actual assignments in here, or we're just it's just well, using eventually? Yes. Yes. I'm Ethan, oh, yes. Okay. Eventually, if I go into here, once you get into the course. Mm -hmm. It will give you a different screen that I'm going to have up here, but it'll yeah. be basically the same thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, you're going to have, I'm going to click on all assignments because that's the easiest way for me to get there. And the first real homework assignment you have is homework one. And if I go to edit assignments, organization, this is not the way you'll do this. Yeah. And basically you just pop up the questions one at a time. Okay. And it will come up. Okay. Okay. So Okay. Okay. Basically this is a homework question. All right? Okay. All right. All right. Thank now, you. Now what I want you to do for the first the first assignment is so like it's not, it's not very user-friendly, this is. Mm -mm. 
<laughs> it really is. It's kind of uh, bulky. Yeah. So if I go to all assignments, there is something here called Introduction to Mastering Chemistry. All okay. these points, all the points from this are extra credit because oh. I really, really want you to do this because in here they tell you how they want to, how they want you to answer questions. Okay. For Sorry. example, for example, if there are five answers in a row, I believe what they want you to do is put the answer, comma, next answer, comma, and so on and so forth. It may not be that way, but it's going to be something like that. So if you take this course, you're going to know how to correctly enter the answers. Okay. 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 Uh, anything? Anything else? Have you have you managed to look at the? Uh, um, have you looked at the syllabus yet? Yes. All all 35 pages of it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not all 35. You know, it's, it's an old lawyer trick. You know, oh, one great. attorney files discovery on the other attorney. Okay. So okay. What, the, what the attorney that served with the papers does is he rents a van and he throws every piece of paper in his office in this van and he tells the other attorney, find, find what you need. Exactly. Okay. I, I, I'm kidding about that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of fluff in the syllabus that, uh, uh, it's put in there to kind of give you a background. Do you really need it? No. What you need are the syllabuses in terms of the presentation. Uh, required resources. There is a section in there called discipline specific information. And what that is, is it tells you how to go through, it gives you a written document on how to go through the individual course in my courses, which I'll get through in a second or two. Then the grading, that's basically all you need. Okay? Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm basically just tap dancing for the next 17 minutes here, guys. Uh, okay. I, I'm here to answer your questions. Uh, I, please, I don't know. I have a question. Okay, Marie. I, I don't know if I, it's, it's, a, it's about the lab class. We got do, time. We, do we need uh, the, the, a code? Do you need a, a lab code? A lab code? Marie, when you, when you go to face-to-face -face classes, you will need a lab code. Okay. Yes, but since we're doing online, do we? Marie, have... Marie yes. Do you, have the, do you have the ability to click off your video? Sure. How am I going to tell? <laughs> come on, okay. Marie, come back. <laughs> come back, Marie. Okay. How am I going to tell if you're wearing a lab coat or not? Besides, it's, it's a bit ridiculous because in the lab, what's going to happen is I'm going to give either one or two things are going to happen. Either I'm going to give you a video and you're going to have to look at the video and write your responses down for that, or I'm going to give you the data. All right. Okay. One okay. or the other thing is going to happen and you're going to be able to take that information and apply it to the results section. Okay. I'll be honest. This is the first time I've taught intro chem lab online. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit different. Really and truly, it should not be any problem at all. Okay. Okay. Aaron, you're being quiet there. <laughs> oh, we have another person. Another person's entered the room. Aaron, do you have anything for me? Nothing? <clears throat> Um, actually, when I was looking through the scavenger hunt, um, oh, good for you. So I, I was trying to get ahead on things, but um, where are we able to post that? Because I was looking for like ways that we were supposed to submit the assignment. So like I went into um, okay. 
at the risk of repeating myself. Okay. But later on in this, later on in the lecture, I'll be repeating myself. But okay. we get into the course. Get into the course. Okay, we're here. All right, now, in order to activate the discussion groups, you're going to need to go to course content. And you're gonna to need to scan down to where it says forum. Okay, now, you're not seeing, you should not be able to see the actual hunt. All you're seeing is this question, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so if you click on it, eh, let me do something else. This is better because it's gonna actually have me viewing it like you see it. Content. And okay, we're in the forum. Go to the scavenger hunt. Okay. Why is this not doing what I want it to do? <sighs> Interesting. Okay, you're gonna know one thing for me right away. I hate computers. <laughs> me too. So as a consequence, computers end up doing what you tell them to do rather than what you want them to do. Yeah, actually that's true. And I didn't, I don't understand why that was not opening for me. Oh, we're tap dancing here anyway. <laughs> Hi, Caitlin. Hello. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, I see it. Uh, uh, oh yeah, restrictions. <clears throat> I can't understand. Okay. It always goes well when things work out. <laughs> it always goes well when the computer aspect of this program works out. Okay, now hopefully. Okay. Obviously, I'm doing something wrong. And it will be, it will be fixed. It'll be fixed before. Okay, the way it's supposed to work. All right. Oh, Faith, you're in here already. Hello. Hey, Professor. Yes, I am trying to record it from my device. However, I'm still at work, but I'm okay. kind of e eavesdropping back and forth. No uh, problem. It's, um, we're so, before so class. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thank you. And you said it's going to be recorded, though, correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. Awesome. I appreciate it.
Anyway, I will get this fixed. I don't know what's wrong with it. But in order to, Aaron, you are, you were asking a question, Aaron. Basically, what should happen is you should be able to pop on the, pop up the thing and hit reply to thread. It gives you a box, type whatever you want, and then go down to post. Okay, Aaron, that's the way it should be. I don't know why that currently right now, I don't know why that's not popping up for me. I don't know why I'll have to investigate something tomorrow. Okay. Next question, guys, anything? We got another 10 minutes before class. Um, I wanted to ask if anybody else figured out how to use the code for my lab and mastery. Cause it's, it's okay. still. I get, did you do that? Who, who's talking? Faith. Faith. Okay. Faith. What you have to do is you have to go to course home, then go all the way down to my lab and mastering. Did you do that, Faith? Faith? No, I just, I, sorry, I, look, I looked it up through Google. I didn't know there was a link down there. No, because you have to go through this way because this is actually what links you to the course. The code I gave you allows you access into this course. Does that make sense? Faith? It does, thank you. Okay, Sorry. you see, guys, you're gonna learn one thing. One thing about this semester, I can't see you for the most part. So I need, we need to communicate through, uh, uh, through verbally, all right? I see basically four people on my screen right now, or actually three, uh, Gaith is actually, got a different picture up there, an icon. So that's just the way, that's just the way it is, guys. Anything else before we start here? So we're going to the homepage, homepage of the course. We are scrolling down to the bottom, this little icon that see, says My Lab and Mastering. That's how you access the My Lab and Mastering course. Anything else before we start, guys? I'm getting, man. Andrew. Andrew. Third time. Andrew? Okay, either he's here or he's not. Oh, I got 16 of you in here. So what have you heard? What have you heard about me, guys? Can you hear me? Andrew. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you, Andrew. Um, yes. So, you know, I actually looked you up on Rate My Professor. Oh, you did? And you still yeah. are here? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, got a, I got a funny story about that I'll relate in a few minutes. Yeah, I, I thought it was quite interesting. It's part of the reason why I chose this class, but um, you have pretty good reviews on there. Interesting ones, so. I have, basically, I have one of two kinds. I have yep. great, great reviews or bad reviews. Yep, no, not a lot of in between. And yeah, that's absolutely true. And generally speaking, the bad reviews come from people that, uh, uh, shall we say, didn't do the average on the, on the amount of work. So yeah. they got upset. What can I tell you? Glad to hear that. Andrew, did you email me earlier? I don't believe so okay not a problem maybe i have two andrews in class yeah it's a good possibility uh ah uh, we have alec joining us okay guys i want to show you something while we're there
I want to show you something while we're in the uh, uh, course here. If you go to course content, I'm not sure that it's available now, but it will be. And you go to forum. What you have in the forum are our discussion questions. But the first one, the first one I've called student forum, it is yours. What I want you to do, what worked out fantastically last semester, uh, what worked out fantastically last semester is that you guys were using, or the people from last semester, specifically use this site to ask each other questions. And I had a remarkable group of about five outstanding students that would access the site and they would give great answers to the questions. So bottom line, you don't have to wait for me to answer you a day and a half later for, through email. This is a great site for that. What is the name of the site? It's the, okay. Do you see this over here? Do you see, are you looking at the screen right now? Yeah. All right, you see the table of contents. How I got there as I went up to course content. Okay. And that puts up a list of modules. Yes. We're gonna go through this later, but one of the modules is the forum. That's how you're gonna access the, uh, uh, that's how you're going to access the, uh, okay. uh, the discussions. And the first one that's up there is this student forum that I've been talking about. <laughs> anything else, anything anybody's worried about? I want, to make sure, I want to make sure I have the right book. It's the Survival Guide to 10, 10 yes. 25. Yes. All right. Is the book required? It, I, okay. I have to require the text in order for military veterans to get the book paid for. Yep. Okay. Can you, can you survive this course without it? Yes. But it is, it's, it's fairly cheap for books as, the, as books go, and it is a fantastic resource. It really is a fantastic resource. I've been using this since uh, 2012. It's published in-house to make sure the cost stays down. Can you survive without it? Yeah. Yeah, you can, because I go through... Uh, uh, I have a lot of PowerPoints that are there. I have videos that are associated with the subject matter. And uh, I have, I give reference to other texts. Answer your question. Sorry, is that Omar? Okay. Well, I've got to start it. Omar, specifically enough, you're the first one there. Lewis. Lewis, Angeles, Adavalo, Lewis, okay, Christina Bacon. Yep, here. Thank you. Uh, Goth was here. Am I, Gaith, am I pronouncing that correctly? Gaith? Uh, yes, sir, I'm here. Correct, yeah, it's Gaith. Thank you. I am going to spell it phonetically. Zaina, Zaina, Baydon, Zaina Baydon, Curtis. Sure, Curtis, sir. Curtis or Kurt? Uh, Kurt is fine. I mean, either one is fine, but most people call me Kurt. Good enough. Thank you. All right. Terry, Terry Ellison. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Apple, I saw your name earlier. Apple? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. There can't be two apples. Two people answered. What's going on? 
Are there really two apples in my class? I don't know. My name is Apple Grace. Okay, Apple Grace, good. Okay. Good enough. I just wanted to make, I heard two people answer. I wanted to make sure I didn't have two apples in here. Andrew, Andrew Gimbert. Supporting it. Thank you. Marie's here. Yes, I'm here. Uh, Chase Glenn. Here. Thank you. Sorry, I've got to get that over. Faviana Gonzalez. Here. Andre Green. Guys, I got to, I have to admit something. I'm going to be admitting a lot of things tonight. This is kind of like Mr. P's confessional. I inherited, I inherited a gene from my father. And this is the name mispronunciation gene. Luckily, it's been diluted somewhat from him. So I get names about 50-50. So if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, please let me know right away. Andre Green. Armethia. Here. Yeah. Okay. Manila. Meanila. But Man I'm sorry. Me mean Meanila. Mm hmm But you can call me Nyla. Wow, why didn't you say that to begin with? Here I am not going. Uh, writing out me now and you're going never mind i hope you understand guys i'm trying to keep this light uh armethia i got you caitlin did i see you earlier caitlin uh caitlin no t caitlin, so, sorry sorry caitlin uh aya here uh, did, did i pronounce that right Yes. See, guys, I'm about 50-50 on this. Elizabeth. Here. Kevin. Kevin Kokomore. Shamira. Shamira Levine. Here. Mariah. Mariah Lapo. Here. Aaron Lewis. Here. Andrew Mellick, I think he's, he's, I do have two Andrews in here. Katie, the fine person is going to take my dog away from me, right, Katie? Yeah, I'll take him off. <laughs> Cash, I think I saw your name come through here. Cash yeah. O'Shea, gotcha. Hayden. Hayden. Yeah. Faith, I saw. Mila. Mila Panovich, Jennifer Roberts, I think I saw her. Yep, here. Alec Root. Here. Brian Ruiz. Brian Ruiz. Here. Helen Sanchez. Here. Spencer Saunders. Here. I think you need to have your speaker fix, Spencer. Victoria, Sinopoli. Here. Sinopoli, here. S oh, Sinopoli, okay. That's okay. <laughs> you should see how, the, how they pronounce Popovich. <laughs> Anybody whose name I did not call. Okay, guys, two rules right off the bat. Number one. If you don't answer within two minutes, I mark your absence. So you need to at least get into the chat room because basically I find it's some of the people sign on and then they wander off to uh, watch Rugrats or something. The other thing is you need to make sure you're on the list. So if I did not call your name, I need to have you give me an answer now. Perfect, perfect. All right, business one done. Oh, uh, Mr. P, please, guys, call me. Mr. Popovich, Mr. P, professor, do not call me doctor. I have not earned that distinction. 
Guys, anybody know what a doctor is? And that don't mean somebody with a stethoscope. What's a doctor, guys? Doctor with a doctor's degree. With the doctor's degree? No. No, you're wrong. A doctor is somebody that studies one subject long enough that eventually they know everything about nothing. Do not repeat that. No laughter. Guys, the jokes are not going to get better. <laughs> this is it. This is as good as it gets. I appreciated uh, the joke, Mr. <laughs> B. Basically, guys, I have give you a little bit of my background. I have a bachelor's in chemistry from West Virginia University. I have a master's in chemistry from the University of Pittsburgh. I also have a bachelor of arts in English. I went back and got my English degree from FIU. And I have a master's in education from the real USF, not directionally challenged University of Florida. I graduated from the University of San Francisco. Guys, Tampa is not South Florida. I petitioned the governor to have the name changed because it irritates me so much. What else here, okay? Uh, General background, I've been married for about 30 years, and I have one daughter, three grandchildren, one of whom is attending FAU at, even as we speak, and uh, so he's in the same boat as you are dealing with all these Zoom meetings. What else do I got to say? What are my expectations of you? You got to want to know that. What do, you, what do I want from you? Do the work. <laughs> What's the half life of carbon 14? Carbon 7. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. A wrong I tried. Answer. A wrong answer, but I'm a good around. answer. Is it somewhere around 10,000 years? I'll get back to that. Remember, guys, as I said in my, in my welcoming letter, this is your class. You pay for it, guys. This is your class. It's up to you to slow me down. If you don't understand something, you got to say, hey, Mr. Popovich, could you repeat that? Could you put that another way? It's up to you to slow me down because you're paying for this. Basically, if you don't do that, I'm going to keep on going. And believe me, guys, when I don't have a face-to-face -face class, it's real hard for me to determine whether or not you're getting something. You're going to get tired of me saying, did you get that? Do you guys understand that? You're going to get tired of me saying that because I have very little way of ascertaining that unless I ask you directly. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn more, guys, if you come prepared. What I do is I have videos, I have PowerPoints, and I have the text. You got three sources. And I will get to this later. When I give you quizzes, I'll give you 10 questions. Five of them are going to be from previous material. The questions are going to be in depth from this previously presented material. The other five questions are going to be on material on the lecture we're going to cover that day. So yes, I will ask you questions on material you haven't gotten yet, but you should be able to peruse through the PowerPoints and be able to figure out what the answers are. Uh, required materials. So what is the half-life of carbon-14? Isn't it somewhere around 5,700 years? 5714. Good, Andrew. Did you know that just by memorizing it? No, I had the um, pre calculus last semester. So they used, uh, you know, they used that in one of the word problems. But I, yeah. Okay, guys, you're all in trouble. From one question, Andrew remembered the half life of carbon 14. You guys are all in trouble now. How would you get? 
Judania. Judania? Yes. Judania, I did not call your name. It's it's Marie. Oh. I'm sorry? Marie? Marie Judania Jordani? You ah. said Marie. <laughs> so what do you go by? Uh Judania. Thank you. Welcome. That's fine. Your your screen is Judania. That's why I asked. Judania, can I yes. ask you a question? You don't know what the half-life of carbon 14 is, do you? No. Do you have the ability to get that information like that? Do you have a phone? Sure. Do you have a smartphone? Can you access the internet? Yes. Guys, I want you to keep your phones on because you can access information while, we're, while I'm going through talking about this stuff. Keep your phones on. Uh, you do, you should buy the textbook in the required materials here, guys. You should buy the textbook survivor guide. Anybody, somebody bought it. How much is it? 30? It's like 25 bucks. 25 bucks. Can I ask you a question? Who answered that? Me. Who's me? Victoria. <laughs> Victoria. Greetings. Thank you. Me doesn't do me any good. You got to give me your name. All right. <laughs> I like your dog, Victoria. Thank you. This uh, is Evie. Hi, Evie. <laughs> uh, looks like an Akita. An Akita mix? Uh, she is a Corgi Australian Shepherd mix. I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a Corgi or an Australian Shepherd right now. Amazing. Yeah, you want mine? <laughs> Only if you'll take a Black Lab Greyhound mix in exchange. Uh, my condo unit only allows 25 pounds. I'm sorry, or I totally would. <laughs> All right, you've just had an exhibit of how to get me off topic. Talk to me about dogs or travel. Duly uh, noted. <laughs> so $25. Can anybody tell me any other class in which you're paying less for books? If you're a part of the SSS program, you can get free textbook lending like I did. Okay, great. Thank you, Shamira. Mm -hmm. Absolutely great, great tip. All right. But the thing is, you have to, you have to, it, it's a good idea for you to get the text on this. All right. Uh, you need to bring a calculator every week. Guys, you need to have a computer with a camera. Is there anybody that does not have a computer with camera access? Okay, note this. I'm hearing crickets right now. So therefore, everybody should be able to get onto honor lock. No problems. Uh, you should have a notebook and a writing implement. Better yet, if you have the ability, take the PowerPoints, change that from one slide per page to six slides per page, print them out. That's what the whole purpose of PowerPoints was, so that you could print these out and people could make notes. This saves you from having to write everything I have on the PowerPoint down. You guys need a periodic table. There is one available in the table of contents here. Or will be. There will be one there in a second. How are you going to be successful? Guys, about three years ago in the summer, I taught Chem 2. And one of my students put it best. Chemistry is very, 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 very hard. It's insidious, guys. Chemistry is insidious because what it does is it falsely leads you into believing you're doing better than you are. You need to have a foundation because in chemistry, more than any other subject, you take that foundation as build, and then you put, keep on adding on top of that. 
So if you don't have the bottom rung, guys, you're going to be totally lost. Uh, some of you are going to try and bluff your way. It's not going to work. It may work for the first test. It may work for the second test. It won't work for the entire semester. As I said, quizzes. My quizzes are going to be previous material as well as new material. Best preparation, I provide the PowerPoints. I provide in the course schedule. You're going to find that I have videos, PowerPoints, and the pages where the uh, where it's re where this particular subject is referenced. Uh, be aware, I do provide practice tests, but a I'm not going to I'm not going to guarantee the answers in the practice test. And B, I have the right to change the questions from, I can rearrange the questions so that the answer of the question in the test, uh, in the practice test is going to be the question part in the actual test. Campus hours, my office hours are going to be Five to five, as far as you're concerned, five to 5.30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I have people that will verify this, that I was here at five o'clock tonight. I will open up the Zoom meeting at five o'clock. That is what I'm gonna use as my office hours. Contacting me. Generally speaking, I answer emails once a day, generally in the morning. So guys, if you have a question after about 11 o'clock, I'm not gonna get to the answer to that until 11 o'clock the next morning. I do provide my phone number, my cell number. My cell number is 707-843-1305. And my home phone, 727-202-7275. Anybody need those repeated? No. So that's the way you are going to be able to contact me. Important dates. This Friday, is the la if you don't like what you're hearing today, this Friday is the last day to drop and get your money back. March 28th is the last day to drop with a W. Please, before you decide to do that, come and see me because I have a better idea of what's coming up. I have a better idea of how you're actually doing in the class. Uh, we have off, guys. Uh, we have off spring break, and that's really the only Tuesday or Thursday that we have off for the rest of the semester. Within the, within the syllabus, I do have these dates down. I will take a hand, I will take roll every day. It's your job to make sure that your name is on here. Grading. Sorry, flipping through. Participation counts 70 points. I split the participation grade into two different paths. One are the discussion forums. Basically, you have to give me three responses every week to the discussion forum. You can do that through that student forum I've talked about earlier. That is your site. All you have to do is ask a question there or provide an answer there. And you will get credit for your one response. To prime the pump, what I will do is I will submit three homework questions to the forum as well. So if you don't really have anything to say in the student forum, you can respond to those homework questions so that you have at least something to say. That's a half of the participation grade. 
The other half involves attendance. Guys, I'm gonna call on you. I will call on you throughout the semester. So because of that, that means that you're participating. So that's half of those 70 points. Homework. Homework is done through my lab in Masterin. For those of you that weren't here earlier, right now I am in the home page. Well, excuse me. Right now I am in the home page of the course. Can you all see? Can you all see my screen? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. This is the home page. Once, if you are not on this page, hit course home, you get here. In order to access the homework, you got to scroll down to the bottom. I provided you guys with a, with a code. All right. So in order to get to the place where you need the code, you have to click, click on this link, which is click on the link. Click on the yeah, right there. Click on the link. It will get you to this page. You hit the open my lab of mastering. That will flip you to another page, which allows you to put in that code. Therefore, you will have access to the homework. Homework is worth 130 points. Again, I split this two ways. The homework is graded on quantity and quality. So it's 130 points. So 75 points of that homework is gonna be based upon how many of the assignments you attempt. So if you attempt, if you attempt 10% of the assignments, you're gonna get 7.5 points. Everybody understand that concept? Can you repeat how to get there, please? Homepage. Yeah. Uh, okay. You're in the home page. Home page. Take the home page, scroll all the way down to the bottom. Click on the link that says Pearson. Okay. You do that, that will get you to this page. Okay, thank you. Do we need to register for Pearson? Yes, I gave you a code already. Okay. I, it was either in the announcement or the email. I did give you a code. If you're having trouble oh, finding that. I believe that, it's in the syllabus as yeah, well. It's, yeah, it's in the syllabus as well. Okay. I try, I try and give you multiple places to find things. The other half of the homework is based upon quality. And that means how many are basically of the assignments that you did do, how many of them you got right. So if you do 10% of the assignment and you get 7.5 7 points out of the 75 for the quality, if you only got 5% right, that means that would be 5% of 75 or 3.75. So your total grade for the homework would be 11.25. Does everybody understand how that works? Yes, I have a question about the homework. Gotcha, Andrew. It, is the, uh, are the questions very math intensive? Yes and no. Depends upon the subject matter, okay? If you're dealing with empirical formulas and stoichiometry, yes, Andrew, very math intensive. Okay. If, if you're dealing with nomenclature and chem reactions, no math. Fair enough? That's fair. Okay. Uh, no more questions about homework? Quizzes. Going back to the home page. If you're on the home page, course content is your major button. Course content gets you into the guts of the course. You go to course content, scroll down and you will see quizzes. 
Whatever quiz number is on the schedule, that's the one that you do. I will generally try and remind you of assignments by Sunday at five o'clock. So how if you notice, points? Andrew? Pardon me, uh, how many points are the quizzes? Total 180 points. So I will, try, I will try and tell you the assignments that are due that week in the announcements and an email. Keep in mind, look after 5 p.m. on Sunday, look at the announcements or the emails because if something changes, that's where I'm going to announce it. Quizzes. Again, half of the answers come from previously given material. The other half come from the PowerPoints and I want you to kind of at least peruse the PowerPoints before I give the lecture. I have a quick question about the quizzes. Uh, so when you said that you're going to do material that's like things that we don't know, how far are we talking about one, one okay. chapter? Not like one second, okay. Victoria. What's going to happen is it will be questions on the material that's going to be given the period after the quiz is due. For example, okay. today I'm going to give and lecture on mat matter, all right? So on okay. Wednesday, you will get in-depth questions on matter. But I'm also on Wednesday going to talk about significant figures, chem and physical changes, and measurement readings. So I will give you easier questions on those subjects. And it's just okay, going so to kind of, kind of go like that. Half are going to be on what the, the le lecture I just gave. Half are going to be on the next lecture that I'm going to give. Okay, because I, I was afraid that you're going to do like chapter one and then chapter 14. And I'm like, we're not even there yet. But okay, that's good to know. Is that a suggestion, Victoria? I no, I would never I suggest. No, no, right, thank guys, you. Everybody, I... everybody, Victoria suggested I give you chapter 14 in the first week. I would like to no, yes, admit that part of work. Offer, but I'll no, have to the you. <laughs> All right. So the quizzes. Again, everybody understands the basic tenets of how the quizzes are going to be questioned. All right. There are 18 quizzes. Right now, there are only three that are published. There will be 18 eventually that you're going to find here. There are going to be two pop quizzes. I'm telling you right now, one of the pop quizzes is going to be a survey that you have to take. Guys, you are getting my lab and mastering free because of the fact that the person that's in charge of my lab and mastering felt sorry for me. But there is no such thing as a free lunch. You have to complete a survey. So one of the pop quizzes is going to be the survey. You complete the survey, you get the 10 free points. Fair enough. That's one of the pop quizzes. There will be another one. 18 of the 20 count. Each quiz is 10 points. That's 180 points. Are we good, guys? Questions? Yes. By the way, if you want the syllabus, all you got to do is click over there and the syllabus will populate. Probably should have had this up to begin with, but oh well, I have it now. All right, talked about homework exams. You got four semester exams, four regular exams. They will all, they'll be given, they count 125 points each. Realize, guys, that the number I enter in the grade book is the number of points you get, not the percentage. So if you get 100 out of 125, I'm going to get enter the 100 and not the 80%. We clear on that? I have extra homework assignments when I get into the actual when I get into the actual guts of the course 
you're going to realize I have extra homework assignments. Most of the test questions. Thank you. Most of the test questions are gathered from the extra homework assignments. This is not my lab and mastering. These are the extra homework assignments. Uh, where am I at? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, got to get back to exams. Gotcha. I consider the exams. Look at this line, guys. I consider the exams to be open book. You can have whatever you want. If you want to, you can, you can pull up the uh, CRC, which is a book that's about that thick. If you want to do that, you're welcome to it. I don't care what kind of notes you have. Everything is available to you except another browser because I don't want you typing in the question and getting the answer from the internet. So you can't use another browser and you can't use your phone. Those are the only restrictions. When I go into Honor Lock and I put my instructions to Honor Lock, that will be in there. Now, the other thing is when you're taking a test, don't be doing something like this or anything that looks like you're texting because that will be flagged. I'm telling them to notice things like that. Um, hey, I also have a good piece of advice for Honor Lock. Do you have any like pictures in the background, like noticeable pictures or anything like that? They can be flagged as other people in the room. Don, Andrew, I'm not really worried about the other people. Okay, but thank you. Thank you very much. It will be flagged. Honor Lock will flag conversations and other people in the room. And basically what that means is that's just a flag for me to go to that point in the video and see what you were actually doing. So are we good on that? We good on the, are we good on the open book aspect? I do have one question. When you said that we were not allowed to have another browser open, if the textbook that we are using or the resource we're using to take notes is off of a web browser and you see that we're not just looking up the answers and actually putting in the name of the textbook, would that be okay? No. No. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, but I can't let you do that. So I have a question then. So it would probably be better then for us to get the physical copies of the textbooks then. Either that or print it. Okay. Yeah, Makes sense. I, I, I'm sorry. I, give me a break here, guys. I'm trying to be as, as good with you as possible. I'm trying to give you almost everything. Oh, no, I have no problem with it. I just wanted to clear that up. So the reason I can't let you have other browsers is the fact that it's hard enough to monitor to begin with. The honor lock tests, those are just like the bigger tests, right? Like unit tests? Yes. Okay. Those are the unit tests. Those are not the quizzes. The quizzes yeah. you're just going to take normally. Honor lock is a pain to set up. Yes. I will agree with you on. Hey, do you know how many phone calls I get every test? Oh, I. Because I somebody I, can't log on to honor lock. Honor lock just might be my least favorite thing. I don't like it. Try and get on the phone. Try and get on the phone with Spectrum. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Spectrum is much worse than Honor lock. I had Honor lock for my last algebra class, and like what uh, someone else said, I have a bunch of pictures in my room, so I've got like race cars and stuff. And if I would move my computer an inch, it would just flag it down, turn off the test. <laughs> And it'd be like, oh my God. Okay, it's Andrew, is that, Andrew, is that what you're saying? It would turn off the test? Yeah, so like, um, I've just noticed things about Honor Lock. If it'll pick up on pictures, it'll turn off the test. If you don't look directly into the camera, maybe every like 30 seconds, like, and, and it makes you look weird doing it. Like you're like trying to focus on, you know, what you're trying to answer. And then you look up every two seconds. It's just bizarre. Because if you don't look into the camera, they'll say your eyes aren't, you know, where they're supposed to be. I don't know. Either thing, don't wear hoodies. Yeah, that's a bad idea. Hoodies are basically, it flags hoodies for some reason or other. Glasses and hats. 
Thank you. I got both. <laughs> Big right. flag for glasses. Like, yeah. I mean, your prescription. I can't no. take these off. Um, um, I don't know what they did for like other glasses. I remember. I uh, Samira, don't worry about it. You, okay, you'll thanks. Be fine. Just don't don't excessively worry about it. Okay. Okay. Another perk here, guys. If you score better than ninety percent of the raw score, that means the score you have just out of taking it, and I grade it. This does not include curves. This does not include extra credit. If you score better than 90% on each of the tests, you don't have to take the final. What I will do is I will average your individual tests and that, that will be the entered number for your final. I take an average of all my test scores. If the exam score does not exceed 75%, you do get extra credit up to 10% on that test. In other words, if the average is 65%, you will get 10%, your, your extra credit will be worth 10% of the 125 points or 13 points. Basically, it's gonna have to be answered by 5 p.m. the day after, the day after it's assigned. And I reserve the right to ask questions extra credit questions on materials I haven't covered, but which is in the test. Guys, I don't like giving makeup tests. The reason for that is if you grade things at different times, inherently it gets graded differently. So it's gonna have to be a real, real good excuse and it's going to have to be a valid excuse. If you know you are going to miss a test and you have a good reason for missing the test, let me know. And I will let you take it early. So the four exams have 125 points each for a total of 500 points. The final, you have the final is gonna be given on May 6th. It, will count, your final will count, and it is cumulative. That means it's gonna encompass the entire semester. The final may replace one of the individual exam scores. However, the individual exam scores will not replace the final. Final's worth 120 points. And it also will be in honor lock. That adds up to 1,000 points, straight 90, 80, 70, 60 percentage. What will happen? I can lower this scale. I have been known on occasion to lower it to an 87%, 77%, 67% being A, B, and C, but I will not raise it. In other words, it doesn't matter how the class is doing. If everybody's got A's, I will not suddenly jump the A uh, lower mark to a 93%. So the total amount of points that we can possibly get is 880? I'm not understanding, Andrew. I combined the participation, the homework, the quizzes, and the exam possible points, and that should make um, 880. You forgot the final. Oh, damn. You're right. Uh, how, much, how many points is the final? 120. 120. Okay, thank you. 880 and 120 makes. Okay. And, yeah, Andrew, I'm not going to go for you for math questions. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. I was, I was trying to write this down. Um, all right, thank you. You have one week after the grades are posted in the grade book to contest them. After that, they're considered permanent. In other words, I don't want you questioning me on a quiz in November that was taken in, I'm sorry, a quiz that was taken in April on, I'm sorry. I don't want you questioning me about a quiz in April when it was taken in January. 
Uh, no late submissions. Homework. Homework, you are allowed to submit late. There's a penalty of 5% per day up down to 80%. So if you're four days late, you're, you, the most you can get on that homework assignment is an 80%. It won't go lower than 80%. And basically, you can read through this other stuff. This other happy horse shit is just put in there because they make me. Questions on the syllabus and grading? No, but I have a question. Uh, are we allowed to kind of curse when we're talking? You mean like saying? Horse shit? I didn't say that. <laughs> well, you said it. <laughs> I said it, so. <laughs> If something slips, if you are constantly espousing that, I will call you aside and ask you to mute yourself, okay, Victoria? Got it. I just, just wanted to make sure. Fair enough. The occasional <laughs> slip I'm not going to I'm not going to harp on. And that's only because it does offend some people. Last thing I want to go over. All right, if you want to look at the syllabus. Syllabus is, all right, the way I got to this screen, I hit course content. Course content gets me to this screen with the modules on the left side. Syllabus will pull up the syllabus. There is a course schedule. Understand that this course schedule is tentative. For right now, I've assigned all the assignments and quizzes and homework assignments. If I fail to mention it in the homework assignment, uh, I mentioned it earlier to some people. The first homework assignment, Introduction to Mastering, is going to teach you how mastering chemistry wants you to answer questions. That the entire points from that particular lesson are extra credit. I want you to do this so that you know how to enter things in correctly. But the course schedule in terms of all the assignments are written in here now. It is subject to change. And I located that by going over to Getting into course content, looking at the modules, course schedule. I've broken the information I'm giving you into four tests. First test has matter, the subject matters are right to the left of it. I believe I have six days material to give you before the first test. And each one of the subjects is broken down. Each subject matter you're going to find has three categories. What I call my online outline, my PowerPoints, and the extra homework. If I go up, call up the online outline. By the way, you're gonna find that downloading these things is a lot faster than trying to wait for it. Well, how I've broken this in, I've got the major title for that particular subject matter, and I've broken it into individual subjects. Within the individual subjects, I basically tell you what slides of the PowerPoint pertain to that subject. I give you a video. I give you both the Survivor Guide and uh, Navaldo Tro's uh, Introductory Chemistry Text. Excellent text, guys. I give you both of those page numbers. So this is basically, this is a, a vital resource for you if you're not understanding something. If you're not understanding something, please, by all means, you have access to the PowerPoints. You have access to the videos and the text. I consider this to be an invaluable asset for you.
Okay, test one. Back. Second thing, you have the ability, we're gonna to get to this a little later. Again, especially with PowerPoints, you're gonna to wanna to download them. Oh, that got there that quick. The PowerPoints I'm, I have are listed here. Now, understand this, please. I think you would be ha I think you're happier that I go back every Sunday. I go back and I review my PowerPoints. The trouble is, I'm a frustrated creative writer. That means when I go back, I change little things. So what you're seeing in your presentation of the PowerPoint may not be exactly what gets presented to you on lecture day. Third thing that's in there are extra homework assignments. Some of these have there, direct, direct participation. Me, uh, is there a PowerPoint for each class period? Yes, at okay. least one. Gotcha. Okay, guys, for the quiz on Wednesday, all the elements I have listed here, if you go to Test one, day one matter. Test one, day one matter. If we look under extra homework. This is in day one. I'm sorry, test one, day one. Scroll all the way down to extra homework. You have the elemental symbols. Guys, you're responsible for these by Wednesday. Guys, I tried to make funny little sayings with them. Hopefully that will help you remember them better. I'm especially proud of Barium. So by Wednesday, we have to know these? Yep. yep. It's, not as, it's not as hard as it seems. Most of them most of them you're going to find most of the elemental symbols in English, the English word, the first letter stands for the first letter of that particular element. Then you're going to find it's either going to be the next letter or the next prominent letter. Like, for example, aluminum is AL. Argon, again, second letter AR. But I can't have argon and arsenic have the same elemental symbol. So for arsenic, we go with AS because that's the next strongest letter. It's not really as hard as it seems. You will get into some like the, the, the ones I have in bold are the ones you're going to have trouble with because there's no reason why gold should have an elemental symbol of AU except that it pertains to the Latin name for gold, which is aurium. So I have those funky ones in bold. So you will be asked elemental symbols on the test. Tomorrow? We have to know them by tomorrow, right? By? Next Wednesday. By this Wednesday coming up, yes. This, no. This Wednesday coming up, yes. Okay. I think I don't actually I don't remember what I did for the quizzes. Isn't just, this Wednesday coming up tomorrow? That would be it. Okay. You said quiz one is due on the fourteenth. So yeah, it's the okay. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Did you hear me say I'm not quite sure what I did? <laughs> All right. They're available until Thursday at five thirty. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a question as well. Is everything that is due going to be posted in the uh, course content? Because I heard you say something. You talked about the book a lot and like homework. Some, some, the extra homework is not required. I'm not grading the extra homework. Oh. The extra work, the extra homework has the answers provided to you. And really and truly, it's a good idea if you do it. Yeah but it's not required. 
will you be doing any sort of extra credit for the extra credit is for the um for the tests that's the only real form of extra credit that i give with the exception if you catch me in an error either on the powerpoints or in something i say if you catch me in an error note it to me if you note it to me i will put a tick on your in the uh, grade book and you get a point extra credit on the quizzes oh okay thank you i'll tell you who's who's asking the question chase yeah me chase let me let me tell you let me ask you this if you have a problem at the end of the semester with the amount of extra credit i give let me know as in I think, too much I think, find, I think you're going to find it's more than fair. Okay. Think about it, Chase. Well, <laughs> think about it. I'm giving you, all you got to do is do the homework and you've got 35 points. All, all right. right. All right. Thank you. Okay. I have Other, a question. I'm sorry. Are nope. you going to be posting this um, recording on that I can rewatch yes. it? Okay, I just yes. I cut out my internet. Yes, my kids are being really loud, so thank you. Okay. I'm sorry, where am I? I'm in course content again. So again, if we are in one of the individual subjects, I'm gonna pull up atomic structure. There is going to be some extra homework assigned for that. Are these graded as well? No, I told you that already. Extra homework is not graded and I can't. Why is this not pulling up? Ugh. I hate, okay. For example, an extra homework assignment would be something like this. All right, very, very good. It's good practice for you to do it. There's also extra homework in the survivor. At the end of every module in the survivor guide, there's more homework. So you've got plenty of homework if you want it, guys. Course content. All right, so we go down the tests. Quizzes are there, forum is there. This is where I will put the extra credit for the tests. What's gonna happen is they're going to be drop boxes. You have 24 hours to answer it in the drop box form. There's gonna be a practice test there and there's a slot for extra information, which should be where the periodic table is. where the periodic table will be. Questions? If I don't have any questions on the syllabus and or the, uh, uh, oh, I need to go through this one couple more things. That was a course content. Communication, you can call up the class list. I believe you have this ability as well. You can call up the class list and if you want to email each other, just click on the person you want to email, click on the email, that will allow you the, uh, that will allow you how to get the, how to get your results or how to email another person in the class. Accessing your grades is grades. Do not worry, if, I don't believe you have honor lock in yours, but don't worry about it. If you did, you'll never have to use it. Submission review. Basically, you can go to quizzes. And by the way, this is how you do it for lab as well. You do quizzes, right? Do not click on the quiz. Click on the arrow to the right of the quiz. And what you should see 
is something that says uh, uh, submissions. And you will go there. Hold on one second. Hmm. Uh, click on the submission review icon, then go to the quizzes icon, which is where you got here. Then what you're going to do is you're going to want to do just like I did. Click on the arrow just to the right of the quiz. And you're going to submit. You're going to hit, click on the submission icon. Once you click on the submission icon, you click on the attempt and that will pull up what you, the quiz result that you want. It's hard for me to do this because I'm in instructor mode, you're in student mode. If you have a problem, what we'll do is we will work it through together. Any questions, syllabus and or what we have to do here? People are discussing in uh, the chat that nobody is able to upload the scavenger hunt questions. Will, Faith, Faith, I already know that there's a problem with it. I have Sorry. to look at it in the next couple of days, okay? I will get it fixed, okay? Um, I don't know what's yeah. wrong with it. Any other questions? Having done that, Oh, excuse me. Yep, I'm here. Uh, so our homework, is that in the my lab? The homework you are going to be graded on is in my lab and mastering. Okay, I want to make sure. There are two extra assignments, one that's within the course content and the other that's at the end of each module in the survivor guide. Got rid of one, huh, Mila? I have my nephew sleeping over too also. <laughs> this one's my nephew. The other one was mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get into course content and I'm going to go to our first lecture. Hopefully I can, everybody is seeing this, correct? Yes. Yep, I'm seeing it. Are you still see, are you seeing the slideshow? Nope. Yes, sir. Gonna, why do computers do what you tell them to do rather than what you want them to do? Ah. I'm going to do something else. All right, I'm stopping sharing right now. I got to go to my regular slides and I will bring up the, basically what I'm going to be discussing tonight is something you guys have had. If you had a chemistry course somewhere in the past, you will have gone through this at some time. So it's going to take a few seconds for this to load up. And you are responsible for the material here on the quiz, this material and the elements. Come on. Yay. Now we're going to go to share screen and hopefully it's somewhere. Yes, it's somewhere. Wonderful. We are seeing the screen, correct guys? It says matter? Yes. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so the way the PowerPoints get broken down, I will give you one page after the title page listing the topics. If you look at the online outline, they match. These are the important subjects I consider within this particular PowerPoint. We're going to get into the definition of matter. 
By the way, you can call me if you ever see me reading something, call me on it. I don't like to read things, all right? We're gonna get into the law of conservation of mass, not that heavily into it. We're gonna to touch on it. We're gonna deal with the states of matter, classification of matter, the law of definite proportions, mixtures versus pure substances, homogeneous versus heterogeneous, and miscibility versus immiscibility. Chemistry is the study of matter. All right, so what's the matter? Jennifer, do you know what matter is? Yes, matter is uh, something that takes up space. And? and uh, has mass. It has two characteristics. If something takes up space and it has mass, it is matter. So what composes matter? Mila, do you have any idea what composes matter? Smallest things of matter. I don't know. Great, great uh, answer. Uh, uh, Adam. Fantastic. Wait, first of all, I got to praise Mila. I don't know. I don't know saves us so much time. It's a wonderful answer because some of this material you haven't been presented before. So I don't know is a fantastic answer. Andrew, what's the what? What's the smallest, or what composes matter? Well, the answer would be atoms, but they're actually uh, smaller components than atoms, and even smaller components to that, such as strings or quark. Absolutely, but Andrew, those things that you just mentioned, quarks and the like, they do not maintain the properties of an individual element. Yes, you are right. An atom also has protons, neutrons, and electrons, but those things do not have the properties of the elements or the properties of the matter. You need to keep these things together. So what we're gonna talk about matter being composed of, we're gonna go down to the level of atoms. Anything below that, we're not gonna worry about, okay? Because that gets into nuclear chemistry and you believe me, you don't want me going into nuclear chemistry. Hey, speak for yourself. That, that stuff's interesting. But it takes math, Andrew. I know. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to struggle with, you know? That's specifically why I'm not a physical chemist. And basically, guys, what an atom is, is, what an atom is, is, what an atom is, is it's the smallest thing which maintains the properties of the element that it makes up. You keep on dividing the matter up and the smallest thing that you get that has the properties that the big thing had, that is an atom. So what happens if you split an atom? If you split an atom, it basically is not an element anymore. If you take neutrons or protons away from an atom, it is no longer that element. And that's what happens in radioactivity. That's how you get uranium eventually decaying down to make lead. We have three states of matter. We're gonna deal with three states. We're on earth, guys. Earth has three states of matter. If we were on the sun, I'd bring up plasma, but we're not on the sun, we're on earth. So matter can either be a solid, liquid, or a gas. Solids. They're held very, very rigidly. There is a crystalline structure that solids have that keeps them in place. They may jiggle, they may vibrate a little bit, but they're not actually sliding away from one another. They're in a very, very firm construction. You can't take your hand and put it through a piece of wood, unless you know karate. But you can't take your hand and literally move the molecules of wood around so that your hand can go through there. That's because they're held rigidly. You can cleave them, but you can't kind of like put your hand in there. Liquids, on the other hand, aren't held as close together. 
There's no real regular arrangement of the atoms. And what happens is they don't vibrate. They kind of slide back and forth. And this is what allows a liquid to flow as you open a water tap. Gases. Gases are the independent, the independent child of the matter world. Gases literally have nothing to do with one another. They're well separated and there's no real, real crystalline structure that gases have. They fly around each other. Important side, the important slide, solids. Fixed shape, fixed volume. Liquids, liquids will take the shape of whatever container that contains it, but they do have a fixed volume. Gases will take the shape of the container and they are also will take the volume of the container. Now we can classify matter further. Basically, Matter can be broken down into substances and mixtures. If all the atoms within that matter is the same, that matter is called an element. It's a pure substance that is called an element. We also can have compounds. Now compounds are made up of different types of atoms and different amounts of the atoms. So if you take different types, put them together and make a new substance, that is a compound. Guys, you are responsible. I'm a history buff as well. So you are responsible for names and what they accomplished. Guy by the name of Joseph Proust came up with something called the law of definite proportions. And basically what the law of definite proportions has in it is it states that no matter where the compound originated, it will always have the same ratio of atoms. No matter whether we took water, made it into steam, that steam, the molecules in that steam still have two hydrogen atoms one oxygen atom. If we take hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, put them together, spark them, we get a boom. After the boom, we see little droplets of water. The water that was created from that fusing, from that spark, that water also has two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen as a ratio. It doesn't matter where it comes from. Every compound that is the same will have the same ratio of atoms to one another. I've already said this. If we have a methane molecule, methane has one carbon that weighs 12 grams and four hydrogens that weigh one gram each. So every methane molecule is going to have a ratio of three grams of carbon to one gram of hydrogen. Every time we have a methane, we're going to have that ratio. If we have 360 grams of methane, we have 260 grams of carbon, 90 grams of hydrogen. That is just the way it is. The gospel according to Proust. Again, I've been through this. So again, we have matter. Matter can be broken down into substances and mixtures. Substances can be broken down to elements or compounds. Element, all the atoms are the same. Compounds have different atoms within it but those atoms are combined in the same way.
Jennifer, silver, element or compound? Element. Eight. You element. only see, you're only seeing one elemental symbol there. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's going to be an element. Andrew, table salt, sodium chloride. Compound. Compound. Two different elemental symbols. Sorry, I didn't know which Andrew you wanted. I'm going to call you Andrew 1 and Andrew 2. You could call me Hunter. That works out for me. This is Andrew Gimbert. Yeah, you can call me by my middle name. I go by that most of the time. So it's, but it's, your last name is Gimbert, right? Yeah, or you can call me by my last name. I don't, it's all good. No problem. Armethia. Hi. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Armethia. Sugar. Um, Look at that. Look at that. This is, this is the symbol for sugar. Would you call that an element or a compound? Uh, element. Okay, Armethia. You'll know this better once you know the elemental symbols. The symbol for carbon is C. Symbol for hydrogen is H. The symbol for oxygen is O. Does this compound have more than one element in it? Yes. If it has more than one element in it, is it a compound or an element? Compound. There we go. By the way, guys, that's how I approach things. I try and get you to answer the question if I think you're capable of it. Faith. Iron. Element or compound? Element. Element. Only one of them there. If you don't see more than one capital letter, it's going to be an element. Ammonium bromide. And I'm going to have to, oh, I still have 33 people there. Hayden. Um, compound. Compound. We're seeing more than one of the element symbols there. Selenium. Uh, Kevin. Kevin, you out there. Kevin is about to be marked absent. Terry. Element. Selenium only has one capital letter. It is going to be an element. Now, if we combine two or more substances, if we combine an element with an element and a compound with a compound or an element with the compound, we get a mixture. Unlike compounds, mixtures do not have to have the same ratio. And you know this yourself. Hayden, have you ever, when's the last time you've been to Clearwater Beach, Hayden? Or do you go to St. Pete Beach? Yeah, I go to St. Pete Beach more. Like, okay. I don't I know, know, a month ago? All right. Well, you were there. Did you manage to get into the water? I did. It was cold. Did you suck up any of the water? No. You didn't, you didn't taste any of the water at all? Oh, no, I probably did, yeah. All right. Compared to the salt water you use to make pasta, which one's stronger? I guess the seawater. Seawater. So they don't have the same ratio but they're yet, they're both mixtures. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 I just said that. What about a pizza, guys? Is a pizza a mixture? Yeah. Is it comprised of more than one thing? Yes. Most certainly it is. At, but yet, a Totina's pizza does not have the same amount or quality of pepperoni as a Cappy's pizza does. Would you agree? Yes. Armethia is agreeing. <laughs> Mixture or small or, or pure substance. Who is allowed to have an adult beverage? Me. <laughs> Who's me? Jennifer. Jennifer. 
A Mai Tai, mixture of pure substance. Uh, Basically ramen mixture. fruit juices. Yeah, mixture. Mixture. Yes. Done. Copper wire. Uh, a second, let me see somebody. Brian, you're out there, Brian. Brian, another person marked absent. Victoria. Hi. Copper wire, mixture of pure substance. Pure substance? Pure substance. It happens to be a metal. Air. Cash, you there, Cash? Yeah. Air. Is air a mixture uh, pure or pure substance? Everybody agree. Or no, mixture. Air is made up of nitrogen, oxygen, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it is a mixture. How about a gold ring? Uh, let's see. Gold pure. ring. Oh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, well, can you there. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. A gold okay. ring. Be careful, uh -huh. be careful, because are you aware of what carrot means? I've heard about it before, but I don't really remember. But I want to make a guess and say mixture because yeah. of the carrot and whatever the carrot is, is how much gold exactly there is. Guys, Elizabeth just did a perfect thing there. If I give you one of these questions and you can make an argument, I said, you said a gold ring, you can make the argument. Well, you didn't tell me, Mr. Popovich, if it was 24 carat or not. If it's 24 carat, then yes, it is pure. If you can make that argument, you get the credit, you get the points back. But you gotta make that argument, okay? Wouldn't it? So you're I a mean, trickster. Yeah. All Wouldn't right. it be a pure? Because if you, it's like the copper wire. If you combine two copper wires together, it's still the same. All right, but. Have you ever noticed gold ring has different carrots? If a gold ring is 24 carats, that means it's pure gold. But if it's 18 carats, this means it's made up of 75% gold, 25% other stuff. Uh, what you have to do with gold is you have to put other stuff in there in order to make it firm. Oh, okay. I thought it was like the quality of the gold. No, well, actually it is. It's the percentage of gold that's in there. Yeah. Is that just with gold too? Or is it like with silver and... I'm not it's sure. Diamonds too, I think. I'm not sure. Diamonds have cut and clarity. Uh, carrots involving diamonds has to do with the size of it though. I used uh, to have... Uh, my original wedding ring was, was a gold nugget ring, which meant that the gold nuggets were pure for 24 karat. The trouble is over the years, they got really mashed down. So it didn't even look like I had a gold, gold ring. Excuse me, Mr. P. Case? Uh, Kevin and Brian, their mics okay. aren't working. Their mics aren't working? Correct. All right. Uh, good, Chase, that was you? Thank you very much, Chase, for telling me that. What about Rust, Chase? Uh, I'm I'm Terry Ellison. I'm sorry, Terry. Okay, yeah, good, okay. Terry. Uh, Rust is on iron, so that's when it oxidizes. So that would be a mixture, right? Mm. Rust is made of iron and oxygen, and it's made with a very very specific combination. Rust is Fe two O three. It's a pure substance. Well, so you got to be a little careful sometimes when you're looking at this. Hey, hey, Mr. P. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Doesn't our class end at 6.45? Or is it later? Yep. All right, guys. You're, uh, you're done with the obligation of class. I need to get through the next couple slides so that you can take the quiz. This will be the only time I promise that this will happen because I'm under a strict regulation because I teach lab each time. So if you're willing to stay with me, good. If you need to cut out, that's fine. But 
I need to go on to, in order for you to take the quiz since it's already published. Where did you say that we could access the recorded class? Because my computer's dying and I don't know how much longer I can last. It will be specifically in the uh, uh, course table of contents. There will be a module that says Zoom meetings. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, if I'm dealing with mixtures, I'm dealing with two types. First type is homogeneous. Second type is heterogeneous. If something is homogeneous, that means you can't tell, you can't figure out one from another. If I look at a glass of salt water, I can't pick out the grains of salt in there. It all looks the same. It's evenly distributed. I can't tell what's making it up just by looking at it. On the other hand, I can have a heterogeneous mixture. A heterogeneous mixture means that it's not mixed. It's not mixed uniformly. Guys, I hate anchovies. One anchovy will molest an entire pizza. So if I see somewhere where there's an anchovy, I'm going to pick that out as quick as possible. I don't like onions or mushrooms either. My wife does. So I have to pick out the onions and mushrooms. I can do that because I can see them and pick them out. A pizza is a hetero heterogeneous mixture. They have different materials in them that are easy to distinguish. Carbonated water, Spencer. Is that a heterogeneous or a homogeneous mixture? Um, hold on. I wrote some notes. Uh, it's a, a uh, homogeneous. I'm going to tell you it depends. If you have a two liter bottle of Coke that's been sitting on the grocery shelf for a week, can you tell that there is carbon dioxide in there? Uh, probably you see not. any bubbles. You don't Pro see any bubbles, so it's probably. homogeneous. Yet, if you take that same Coke, open the top, do you see the bubbles? Yeah. So it depends upon the circumstances whether this can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. Make sense, Spencer? Yeah. Alec, how about a rum and Coke? That's homogeneous. Homogeneous. You can't tell the rum molecules from the Coke molecules. Curtis, a Reese's peanut a Reese's candy, a Reese's candy bar with M and M's. Homogeneous, heterogeneous. Uh, it's heterogeneous. You can see the M and M's. Cake dough. Somebody answer. Heterogeneous. Homogeneous. If you're, mixing, if you're homogeneous. mixing up the cake, you can't tell the chocolate from the sugar from the flour. I have a question. I have an answer, Shamira. <laughs> For carbonated water, if that's on the quiz, will there be no wrong answer if we pick homogeneous? It depends, Shamira. I will choose the right answer. Okay. If, you, if you can explain why you answered it the way you did, or you could say, oh, Mr. Popovich, it's heterogeneous because when I open the bottle, I can see the bubbles coming up. Okay. Does that make sense to you, Shamira? Yes. Thank I will you. try. I will try not to give an ambiguous question. Okay. But believe it or not, even I try and think of the most impossible things, and you guys come up with another instance. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We're almost done here, guys. A solution is a special mixture because a solution talks about two liquids that are mixed together. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more liquid substances. So when we're talking about liquids, we don't talk about heterogeneous, homogeneous. What we talk about is miscible or immiscible. Miscible sounds like mixable. So if you have a miscible liquid, this means that one liquid dissolved the other. If you have an immiscible solution, 
This means they don't dissolve. Has anybody ever tried to mix up salad dressing with vinegar and oil? Mm -hmm. Eventually, yes. eventually, yes. what did it, did they separate out into two layers? Yes. 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 Of course. Oh, did those it? are immiscible. A solution will consist of the solvent and the solute. Solvent is what gets dissolved. The solute is what is being dissolved. Solvent, solute. Just introducing, we're gonna get into this in a later, later time. And hopefully the last thing, when, the, when liquids are miscible, they mix completely. It's a homogeneous mixture. Uh, Hunter. The first one. I'm sorry, what? The first one is going to be miscible. Left one, the left one. Yeah, yeah the left one, yes. Left one is miscible. The right one, it looks like it's not mixing. So nope. it is immiscible. Immiscible, yeah. So if they don't dissolve, what will happen? What will happen if they don't dissolve and you let them sit long enough? What's going to happen? Separate. They'll separate into layers. And the way you notice this is you will see a distinct line. There will be a distinct line between the two liquids, and that indicates that they don't mix. Yep. OK, guys. This is as far as I'm going. I will start up on Wednesday with chem and physical properties and go from there into measurement readings and sig figs. Is it's the next? It's not I gonna be the most exciting lecture that we have this semester. Victoria. Is, I thought the lecture was on, uh, on Thursdays. Thursday. No, okay. <laughs> Again, uh, you're gonna, guys, you're just gonna have to deal with me. I will say Wednesday all the time when I really mean Thursday. We meet on Tuesday, Thursday. All right, thank God, because we've been saying Wednesday this entire lecture, so I've been very Thursday. confused. Thank Thursday. you. Thursday, okay? Thank you. This thank you. Mr. Popovich's thank dyslexia. You. Talk I'll, to see, you. I'll see you in the lab. Have uh, we, I will do send we stay in, in here for the lab? Yeah, no. do we? No, I, I will send that. a separate invitation. And okay. Okay. maybe right. it may, the separate invitation may be a little longer than 715. I got to make sure this, this thing records first. Okay. 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 okay thank you. Thank you. Take, take thank care you. guys. Thank you. Thank hey, you. professor, Bye. I just have a, thank I have you. a quick question. Sorry. I've been just hanging in and out. Um, cause you know, I'm at work yes, at guys. the moment for, for the lab. Do I stay in here or do I go out? No, I exit? no, no. Okay. Okay. I will send another invitation. Okay. Sounds good. See you then. Thank you. See you later. I had sure. something to say. What's that, Lewis? Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I was uh, on the on the attendance to make sure. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha, you, Lewis. All right. Speaking of that, Zaina, Kevin, Andre, me, Lewis here. Uh, Kevin was here. Thank you. And that's it. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I have sorry I'm doing this real quick, but I have to get off of this to make sure it records. All right. See you, those of you that are in my class, I will see you later. All right, have a good one.